did it. I watched the whole Hype House show. And it only took me four hours. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> That's right, Greg. In case you didn't know, the internet's most popular content house now has a Netflix reality show. It came out a couple weeks ago. I watched the whole thing, and I gotta say, it was honestly, a, it was honestly a huge disappointment. When I first heard that the Hype House was making a show, I was like, okay, that'll be kind of interesting. I mean, like, there are a lot of huge TikTokers in the Hype House, right? Like, isn't like Charlie D'Amelio, Dixie D'Amelio, Addison Ray? aren't they all in the Hype House? I was like, it'll be kind of interesting to see them, like, navigate all this newfound fame, go into some interesting business-related topics, making content together. But it turns out that those people aren't in the Hype House anymore, and Dixie and Addison aren't in the show at all. Just Charlie is, and she's, like, barely in it. I guess I haven't been keeping up with all of the latest news on the Hype House, but I didn't realize that like everybody who is really popular has already left the Hype House, which is to be kind of expected with content houses. I mean, that's kind of how it goes, right? They get really popular, everyone in it gets really popular, and then realizes, wait, I don't need to live in a house with like 16 other people, and so they get their own house. That's just kind of how it goes. And that really encompasses the biggest problem with the Hype House show, is I think it could have been like fun to see the Hype House in its heyday. I feel like that's probably at least what a lot of the fans were hoping for, is like a show with all these super famous people in it like hitting their big break during the show but instead it's kind of a show about the hype house falling apart it was so much fun just creating content every day and now times have changed People are talking about how like they never even see Lil Huddy anymore because he moved to a different like Hype House 2.0 that's somewhere else. Well, I haven't seen Chase in like forever. I know, I haven't seen him since the last house. And like most of the members of the Hype House, I didn't even know who they are. I had to really pay attention when they were introducing everybody because I was like, who the fuck is that kid? So there's a few different plots that the show focuses on, but one of the main ones is surrounding Thomas, who's like the founder of the Hype House. I think Thomas was actually in Team 10 also, so. Wonder where he got the idea. At first, Thomas comes off kind of seedy to me. He just seems like a businessman who is like capitalizing on his friendships with all of these famous TikTokers, a lot of whom seem a lot younger than he is. Also, one of the first things he does is like take credit for blowing up the D'Amelios and Addison Ray. We've launched people like Charlie and Dixie and Addison. Being a part of this brand really helped blow everyone up. Damn, dude, you discovered Charlie D'Amelio? That's crazy. You must have gotten like super lucky to find her. Yeah, when I discovered Charles, that's her full name, Charles D'Amelio. She was just some nobody making TikToks in her room to her 60 million followers. But I took her under my wing, I taught her everything I knew, she gained another 1 million followers, and then left the Hype House and gained another 40 million followers. There's also a part where he's talking about kind of like what led him to create the Hype House. I used to walk to a middle school where I went with a lot of kids that had money and I didn't, and I used to order headphones online and upcharge them. And then unintentionally, I think, he says something like, yep, I guess I've just always been trying to make a quick buck. Anything I could do to make a quick buck, I've always been like that. Which is not a good look when you're talking about the business that you are running right now. Yeah, I guess when I think about it, I've always sort of been starting like scammy type Ponzi schemes that I knew weren't gonna work out but would make me rich and everyone else hate me. I guess I just sort of have entrepreneurship in my blood, man. I don't know. With that being said though, as the show went on, I went from like thinking Thomas was a seedy businessman to just like feeling really bad for him. I'm not like fully Okay. He wants the Hype House to work so bad, and he is the only person taking it seriously. I want you guys to give it your all, so that people watch you guys and are like, holy f**k, I love Calvin and Patrick. Holy f**k, I love Larry. Because then you guys get to grow the next part of your career too. I'm the only per person that has done anything on the business end of this. So that's why I get so stressed about it. I literally lost 10 brain cells from this conversation. <laughs> No, wow, I just, that's like, rude. One thing that I thought was really funny was that in the show they say like, yeah, we, we pay for this house with sponsorships. We pay with brand deals. The rent here is paid for by the brand deals that we do on the Hype House socials. And they show a bunch of examples of brand deals and they're all for Bang Energy. And then when they talk about sponsorships for like the rest of the show, they just say like, hey, have you done your Bang ad yet? No, I haven't done mine. I gotta, I guess I gotta do more Bang ads for the Hype House TikTok account. I think it's just Bang that is supporting the entire Hype House, which is kind of crazy. I told him. I'm only gonna cover it your rent if you're gonna be posting the bang videos. Like Thomas is really selling himself as like an entrepreneur and a businessman, but at this point, like he doesn't even run his own business. The Hype House is just like a subsidiary of Bang Energy. I would say they should just call it the Bang House at this point, if that didn't sound disgusting. Yep, this is the Bang House. This is where we all live. Whenever we need to get anywhere, we hop on the Bang Bus. As we learn more about Thomas, it kind of just seems like he wanted to create this business because he wanted to live in a house full of people that were his friends. And for some reason, the only way he could think of to do that was by starting a business. 
is? Uh, where all of his friends are like employees? I grew up quick and I never really had a childhood. I never had one place to call my home and that's what I do here. Which honestly seems like the messiest and worst way he could have possibly done it. He pitches it as having this appeal of like, everyone can live under one roof and we can all post together and the rent is paid for by the bang ads. But then we find out that literally nobody wants to do these bang ads. Like nobody is doing them. We really don't have that much to do and we still suck at it. You have to do one video a month, that's it. To live in a mansion for free. So they're just like living in this house and Thomas is constantly stressed and like having to badger his friends to post these bang ads to pay rent. Like Alex, if I tell him to shoot a bang video, he'll do it. That's you don't the, wanna post like, bang videos, like that's not your brand. And it's like, you know you can just like live in a house with your friends, right? You guys are all famous and rich. Can't you just pay rent, like your own rent and then not have to worry about it? A lot of the drama in the show seems to revolve around Thomas feeling like people don't like him and that the business is failing. Thomas will be like, I don't understand why like nobody none of my friends want to be around me anymore what am i doing to drive them away but then like every scene that he's in with other people he's like tearfully begging them to post bang energy ads a lot of what's really stressing thomas out in the show is that lil huddy chase hudson is his real name in case you were wondering has left the main hype house to go start like a second hype house which is like closer to la because chase is working on his music career he wants to be known as a musician we want to keep chase's house as like an extension of hype house so it's more like a Hype House LA location. And they're gonna work on making content out of there for Hype House. We will. But it turns out that Chase, while living there, hasn't been posting any bang ads. He hasn't been posting any TikToks at all and has just been focusing on his music career. Chase hasn't posted anything recently. He made one TikTok over the last six months. So Thomas is so stressed because he's like, I, I told this guy I would pay his rent. Hype House is paying his rent and he's not posting any Bang Energy ads. It's like a huge stressor for the majority of the show. And Thomas is like, I don't know if Chase even wants to be in the Hype House anymore. I don't know why he's not posting his ads. And it's like, do you guys not have like a contract? Like Chase moved to his own house and is not doing the work that he agreed on. Can't you just make him pay his own rent? I'm so confused how Thomas is getting stuck paying the rent when Chase is not doing what he He's supposed to be doing. Thomas is just like, damn, Chase left. He's doing his own thing. And now he's not bringing any money or like followers to the business. God damn it. I guess I'm just stuck paying his rent forever now. Cause I said I would once on a whim. Well, all the time I just feel taken advantage of. With how stressed Thomas is for the entire show, it kind of makes me wonder like how good of a businessman is he really? Like, does he really have entrepreneurship in his blood? Like, is he really a businessman to the bone? I've always been starting little businesses here and there and then like worrying myself sick about them. I'm sort of an entrepreneur in that way. I remember back in high school, I used to break down crying because I couldn't figure out if my headphone selling business was gonna work. I just could never remember if I was supposed to be selling the headphones for more or less than I bought them for. Now, it might sound like this show is just about people having a miserable time, but Chase is actually having a pretty good time for the entire show. In fact, he might be the only person having a good time during the show. When Thomas is pulling his hair out about bang energy, Chase is playing pinball in his mansion that is paid for by the hype house. Big bonus. Alex Warren is panicking because his views are declining. Chase is in the hot tub. Bang, bang, singles helping produce and riot, great album. Mia is screaming at people in the desert because she feels like the Hype House is falling apart. Chase is eating by himself alone in his room that the Hype House paid for. Chase, you may have heard of before. He used to date Charlie D'Amelio. He's very famous. He's very popular. He used to be a huge TikTok star, but now he's like really focused on making music and dressing like a vampire. And so he doesn't really want to do social media anymore or be like involved in the Hype House at all, which is something that I think everyone seems to understand except Thomas. Like Chase Chase moved to get away from them. He's not posting his ads. He invites like a bunch of TikTokers over to hang out with him, but doesn't invite Thomas. And Thomas is still kind of like, I wonder if Chase like, doesn't really like being in the hype house. I need to know if Chase is even gonna be a part of this anymore. I wish you'd give me a straight up answer about that. Which to be fair, Chase should just be straight up instead of just like freeloading in this huge mansion full of pinball machines. But Chase makes it abundantly clear that he does not really want to be in the hype house anymore. I'm very grateful for the opportunities that came to me through um, being a, a social media star, but it could end at any single point. Um, music's my passion. Now, he is saying all this in an interview for a show called The Hype House on Netflix. It's the show I'm making a video about right now, actually. You may have heard of it. So, you know, I guess he does still want a little bit of the cloud from The Hype House. Since it is a show about influencers, like, dealing with fame and dealing with all of these issues that the majority of people don't have to deal with, you might think it might be, like, really interesting to hear their thoughts on certain things. Like, for example, one night Chase hosts a dinner at his mansion, and the whole crew gets to talking about cancel culture. Cancel. <laughs> Wait, who was the last person to get canceled at the table, go? Probably you. Except the, their only take is basically really like, I wish we didn't get canceled so much. When it comes to cancel culture, you 
never know what someone might deem offensive. They're all talking about how much it sucks being canceled and like, don't get me wrong, like getting death threats and stuff, of course that's not fun. You should never go out of your way to like actively harass people online. But if people don't wanna watch your videos anymore because you were partying during the pandemic, that's what that they're talking about, by the way. They're talking about how they got canceled because they were having literal like huge mansion parties at the beginning of the pandemic. I threw Larry his 21st birthday party and there were a bunch of people it definitely wasn't COVID safe. I got so much backlash. I don't really think you can blame people for not wanting to watch you anymore. Anyway, they all sort of like go around the table talking about how they've all been canceled. They keep using that word. They're talking about cancel culture. It sucks to get canceled. If you get canceled for something, that's what you're known for for the rest of your life. Which is crazy because I could have sworn I was watching them on a Netflix reality show, a brand spanking new Netflix show. That's wild. Yeah, man, I don't know. It just really sucks to have like everyone who loved you turn against you and you get completely deplatformed. You're all all of your business opportunities dry up. It's honestly starting to feel like the only things I have left are like my millions of followers and, and all of my money and my successful music career and this reality TV show. At this point, that's all that's keeping me going. The show actually does get into some like deeper, more interesting topics that I think are like important for influencers to understand and talk about. Nikita Dragons in the show, who I believe has had a fair bit of controversy in the past for doing some problematic things. She and Larry are kind of like best friends they're kind of like the only people in the hype house actually that seem like they are genuinely friends and during the show It comes up that Nikita is being accused of uh, like blackfishing and Larry like sits her down and has a chat with her about like why that's not Okay, I just don't think I can like Sit back and just let the black community and just everyone on the internet just say like oh, how are you friends with this person when she blackfishes? I see you in person almost all the time you don't look like those pictures on the internet. And overall, it's a good topic that I think it's important that they dove into, but they like barely spend any time on it, honestly. There's just like one scene of them talking about it and then they like forget about it forever. Larry does like put his foot down and be like, hey, don't do this anymore. If you do, like, I'm not gonna fuck with you anymore. But I just feel like, you know, they don't really go into like the nuances of it at all. Larry's just like, hey, can you stop doing this? And Nikita's like, yeah, now that you put it that way, I will. But you know what? I guess it would make sense that they would want to cut out the majority of that important conversation because we got to get to Alex Warren, dude. We got to figure out what he's up to. I spend on my YouTube videos alone anywhere between fifty to $70,000 a month. Oh. You might have seen Alex Warren before on YouTube because I know a lot of people have made videos about him being a David Dobrik copycat. I personally have never really looked too much into it, but after watching this show, holy shit. This guy is a David Dobrik copycat. His videos are very similar, but like he even talks the same as David Dobrik. The first time I heard him, I felt like I was watching someone else's voice come out of his body. Recently, this last month or two, my numbers have been going down. And I missed the mark with that one. He sounds like David, he dresses like David, he films like David. In fact, in one of the very first scenes he's in in this show, he's actually trying to kill one of his best friends just like David Dobrik. Oh! Oh! Alex, unfortunately, in this show does not come across super likable. You wanna take the Rolls Royce or the G-Wagon? I wanna take the G-Wagon. Rolls Royce it is. And of course, it's it's hard to make judgments about like how likable people actually are based on like a reality show or even their own videos just because they're so edited. But like, damn, the way that he acts in this show, <laughs> not great. Cobra is afraid of ducks. Today, I've decided to surprise Cobra with a duck in our room. <laughs> a lot of Alex's like plot line is about like relationship drama between him and his girlfriend, Cobra. Cobra seems like a pretty cool person, like down to earth. It doesn't really seem like she lets the fame get to her head too much and isn't like super engrossed in like making content and, like on the grind constantly, whereas Alex very much is. The hardest part about making relationship content is separating the business from the relationship, for sure. The line between social media and a relationship definitely blurs, like not stepping over the line is very mm -hmm. difficult to do. And that's like a big point of tension between the two of them is like, Cobra's kind of like, sometimes it's hard for me to like distinguish what Alex is saying for videos and like what he actually means or like where the boundary between like the relationship we have in videos ends and where our real relationship starts. And honestly, based on what I've seen in the show, if I were you, Cover, I would take the, I would take the relationship in the videos. I would hope that actually that is the real relationship. There's one scene where Alex and Cover get into an argument because Cover's like, hey, can you not take up our whole room with like your video making equipment and your desk and shit? Can you not take over the entire room. I'm not. Okay. The argument ends with Alex calling her delusional. I'm not trying to sound like an asshole. Do you get what I'm saying? No. And I don't think you sound like an asshole. I think you're delusional. He calls this girl that he loves delusional. She's like, hey, can you just like not like take over our, our entire living space? And he's like, you're fucking crazy. You're insane. But that's not even the worst part because the way Alex apologizes for this argument is by making a video 
where he shows Cover a little fox. <laughs> it's a fennec fox. And she does think the fox is very cute. She likes the fox. The fox is actually so cute. I guess this was a really good like apology from Alex. <laughs> it's just like your way of apologizing for something you did off camera is by like making a video for your own channel. Couldn't you have done something off camera for her? Something nice that doesn't make it just seem like you were like out of content for that day. Cover really wants Alex to like get serious in the relationship. She wants to settle down. She wants to get married and have kids. But Alex feels like he's like not really ready yet. He feels like he still is a kid at heart. He wants to like keep making videos. I'm in a full-time job right now. And I'm in a full-time commitment of trying to make people laugh and make people feel a certain way. And I'm not done, you know, doing pranks and doing stunts. So kind of like a touchy subject, right? Probably something you don't really want to like joke about or like put on blast online, right? Well, I guess not according to Alex, because while Alex is kind of worried about like his declining views lately on his YouTube channel, he decides that one way he might be able to sort of like boost his numbers is by having a fake proposal and wedding on YouTube. Alex having the fake wedding makes me feel a little hurt because it's something that I really want and to like fake it is like a little messed up. I definitely don't think he realizes that it might be like toying with my emotions because he doesn't really think like that. He just thinks, okay, bit, this is bit. This scene really makes you feel bad for Cover because she keeps saying like, I mean, I guess it'll be kind of fun, but I just kind of wish it was real. So that's going to make it kind of hard to get through. It's like, God damn, dude. And I think it's a little cruel to be honest, but at the same time, like I guess anything for views. Even other members of the Hype House are like, yeah, this is kind of fucked up. I don't know why we're doing this. I'm not sure how Cover feels about the wedding. I haven't really asked her. I think that she's, you know, really taking it seriously and going out. I'm buying a super nice dress. You haven't asked? You didn't ask her if she was cool with doing this? Did, what, did you just set up the tripod and propose to her and be like, D -d -d this is fake, okay? It's fake, I'm gonna edit this part out. This isn't real. Cover ukulele, pineapple juice, coconut milk, and then do you take this hunk of beautiful meat to be your husband? I do. It just seems like a really bizarre relationship and like every scene that Alex is in is just like miss after miss for me That did not make him seem like a super likable guy. So what do you want? To get married to you in a reasonable time. Okay, you know what I want? What? Just to not worry about that. At the very end of the show, they do go into Alex's home life. Apparently, he comes from a very difficult household. It seems like his dad died when he was young. His mom and him aren't on very good terms. It kind of sounds like she was pretty uh, bad. When I was 17, my mom handed me an eviction notice. I just left and didn't take anything except for a computer and a camera. And so I was homeless. But after the entire show showing just like Alex kind of being mean to his girlfriend and like being overly obsessed with videos to the point where his girlfriend doesn't even know what's real anymore, it kind of just seems like the show was just like trying to throw a Hail Mary to make you like this guy. And honestly, it did kind of work. I do, I did really feel for him at the end. There was a very sweet scene of him going to visit his dad's grave and I did tear up a little bit. It was a sweet little moment. Very sad though. In fact, pretty much like everyone in this show is like sad all the time. You got Thomas because all of his friends are leaving and Alex and Cover because their relationship is on the fritz. Everyone except Vinny. I blew up because of thirst traps. I think Vinny might be my favorite character in the show. Not because he's like the most likable guy or the most down to earth guy. I just want to see more of him because I'm trying to get like a handle on what, on who he is. Because while everyone else is sad all the time, Vinny is pissed the fuck off, dude. What's wrong? I don't know, I just hate everything. Everybody. There are multiple scenes where there's like kind of like a security camera type camera in the kitchen of the hype house And Vinny will just kind of like walk into the room so mad get some juice out of the fridge and then leave Sometimes he'll say something like I'm so fucking pissed right now I'm gonna punch someone in the face Right now I swear to god if one person says something off to me it doesn't matter who it is I will probably punch them and they never explain why. It happens multiple times in the show, and they never explain why he's mad. I'm pissed, absolutely beyond. No, beyond pissed. He just walks into the kitchen and he's like, no one look at me or I will I will shoot you in the head right now. And then he leaves and everyone's kind of like, huh, that was weird because Vinny's in a bad mood today. And every day. Is that normal? Huh? Are you normally mad like that? Yeah. Vinny is such a confusing character. So everyone's kind of got their own like niches in the hype house. Some people make pranks and some people make dance videos. Vinny makes thirst traps. It is kind of awkward for me to make them. I don't even like look at them. I don't want to see my cringy self doing that. He hates posting thirst traps. He hates posting on the hype house. I think he doesn't like being famous. Vinny doesn't like it. Yeah. Vinny hates getting shit on every day. He hates the attention. Vinny's an 18 year old who's like, 
a nerd trapped in a hot, sexy summer boy's body. But ironically, because he's so handsome and his thirst traps are so good, he is the most famous person there currently. Which begs the question, why is Vinny in the hype house? Living in a content house, it can get overwhelming at some points because you want to be alone sometimes. Vinny is the most famous person there, so it's not like he really needs to like leech clout off of everyone else in the hype house. If anything, like he is providing the clout for everyone else to sort of nibble on. He doesn't like making TikToks. He doesn't like posting thirst traps on his own channel. He never posts bang energy ads because nobody does. He doesn't even hang out with them. He just like games alone in his room and then comes out occasionally to tell everyone how pissed off he is and threaten their lives. Why Vinny is in the hype house? I will never understand. The ending of the show is really weird because the whole show, you're like, okay, this hype house thing like is not working. Everyone is stressed. Nobody likes it there. In fact, there's a really funny part where they're going to have like a, a hype house prom because I guess a lot of people didn't get to go to their proms due to like their TikTok obligations. When Nikita was in high school and she had prom, she was not out yet. So they're going to have this like awesome prom. It sounds like it's going to be really fun. And listen to what Thomas says. I'm stoked that Nikita threw this prom. I feel like everyone together is the perfect opportunity for me to tell them I've been shutting down. It's like, holy shit, dude. No, it will not. This most magical night will certainly be the perfect time to tell everyone I'm evicting them. That'd be like if at real prom in high school, the principal came on the microphone. He was like, all right, guys, I'm glad everybody's having a great time. Prom is a really important time in your life. So I thought that now would be a really great time to tell you something you will also never forget. Uh, and that is that none of you are going to college. That's right. We lost all of your transcripts. Um, so you will not be able to apply to college, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, who wants to hear that Pitbull song one more time? But then at the end, at the very last minute at like the last scene in the show thomas is like you know what i think i'm gonna keep this hype house thing together for a little while longer i've been stressing a lot lately about what to do with this brand and this group of kids in general and maybe i shouldn't end it and then it just ends. It was ending with like everyone going their separate ways and kind of being okay with that. And Thomas is like, you know what guys? I think I might keep this self torture going just a little bit longer. So my plan is to add some more people. And I think I found a couple people. I got a lot planned, so stay tuned. Anyway, overall, it was a very strange show. Uh, I, I kind of feel like they started like negotiations for the show when the Hype House was in its heyday. But then when it came time to like actually start filming it, they were like, oh shit, everyone's kind of gone. I guess we could just co sort of cobble together a quick eight episodes. So yeah, overall, I say I give it a two thumbs in. And now it's time to talk about the sponsor of this video. Guys, I've been thinking long and hard about this whole content house thing. And honestly, I've decided it's time to start one. Yup, I'm taking all of my best friends and putting them in a house together. We got Jonathan Squarius. We've got Lil Jimmy, Rachie Rach, Squid, and about 30 other people all getting packed into this one house to make content. And the best part of all is we have a sick ass sponsor, ExpressVPN. Uh, one second, hold on. Hello? What? You guys are all leaving? We just moved in like 20 minutes ago. Oh, you're all too famous now. You all figured out you could pay rent on your own? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I guess this content house is just me now. You know what? I could be mad, but... It makes a lot of sense, you know? Because using the internet without using ExpressVPN is just like starting a content house with all of your famous best friends. It's not worth the risk. That's because when you're online and you're not using ExpressVPN, you can be tracked by your internet service provider, by online advertisers. You're susceptible to hackers snooping your data. You know, your internet service provider is allowed to like keep a log of everything you do and sell it to people, right? You know they're allowed to do that in America? Not cool. I've got ExpressVPN on my phone, on my laptop, on my desktop computer, anywhere that I can have ExpressVPN, I've got ExpressVPN. Because when I'm doing something important or I'm on a public Wi-Fi, it's much better to have that peace of mind that all of my data is being encrypted and sent to ExpressVPN's secured tunnel so I don't gotta worry about being tracked by my internet service provider. The only thing I really have to worry about is all of my friends leaving me. ExpressVPN's got the fastest speeds, 24 seven customer support. And they've got server locations in so many different countries which gives you the opportunity to unlock content that's not available in your area. So if you want to check it out and find out how you can get three months for free, then head on over to expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Danny Gonzalez. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. They're a longtime sponsor of the channel, so guys, go ahead and check them out, show them some love, and I'm going to go figure out a new way to make a quick buck.
All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. We are the largest content house on YouTube. And if you subscribe and turn on my notifications, you are legally forced to move into the Greg house where you'll be forced to make bang energy ads all day, every day. So make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to do that. And I'll see you next time. Uh, bye bye.